Now that we can connect into the Pi remotely, uh, we have made it possible that others could potentially do the same thing. Uh, we need to do our best to try to prevent someone else from gaining access to our system. One of the best ways to do this is with two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication typically means you authenticate yourself to a system based on something you have and something you know. Uh, there are several ways that you could do this. Uh, for this project, we are going to use certificate-based authentication, which is also referred to as public key and private key authentication. Uh, the public key will remain on the Pi uh, while you keep the private key on the computer you are connecting in from. In addition to supplying this private key for authentication, you will also have to supply a passphrase. Um, it does make accessing the Pi a bit more, shall I say, frustrating, but it definitely makes it more secure at least a little bit. Like I've said in the past, no system is secure unless it's not connected to the internet at all or even powered on, but I digress. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has instructions for setting up two-factor authentication. Um, I have taken those instructions and modified them slightly. Uh, they use a key generator that is a part of the operating system. Um, I personally prefer to use Putty's key generator. Um, I also disagree with their instructions. They state that you shouldn't add a passphrase to your key. Um, I do think that you should go ahead and do that uh, just for the extra security. Uh, we will start by generating a public key pair using the putty key generator, which I um, had opened in the previous video, but I'll go ahead and open that back up now. So this is Putty Key Generator. Um, what we're gonna do with it is we are gonna generate a public and private key pair. So you'll click on the Generate button right here and it's gonna tell you to uh, move your mouse over the blank area as it creates that those keys. Okay, so now that it has successfully completed creating the keys for us, you will see the public key here at the top. It has generated a fingerprint, <clears throat> a key comment, and now this is where we will add a key passphrase. So I'm gonna do this in my password generator. Um, this is just a standard password, make it as strong as you can. And make sure you put it into both fields here. Make sure they match. So now all we have to do is click on the button for save public key and save private key. So I'm going to save this out to my desktop for now. And I'm going to call this baseline. Or actually, what I'm going to call it is the master on baseline private key. Now that's kind of a long file name. You could shorten it and make it a little bit, condense it a little bit to make it a little bit better, whatever you want to use here. So then I'm also going to save the public key going to use the okay so now that we've got the public key and the private keys saved we need to go back into our SSH connection okay so we're connected through putty and we are already in our home directory, so let's just make sure you can do that by typing PWD, and it says that we're in the master's home folder. So we need to make a hidden folder called SSH. So we'll do make mkdir for make directory dot 
SSH. And then let's do ls minus a so we can see that hidden directory. And then we need to go into that directory by using the cd.ssh command. And now we need to make a file called authorized keys. And we'll use nano to do that. So nano authorized keys. Okay, so now this just opens up a blank file. Uh, but the beautiful thing about being connected into the Pi uh, through SSH in PuTTY is that we can copy and paste things from our management operating system into the Pi. So I need to copy and paste this public key that PuTTY generated for us. So I just copy that. I'm going to come over here to PuTTY, make sure the uh, block here is a solid green. You can right click and then just press the home key to get back out to the beginning of that line. And all you have to do at this point is press Control X, press Y to save it, um, enter because we're going to overwrite that file name. So now in that directory, you can see that file. Now we need to change the permissions of the authorized key, authorized keys file. And you do that by using the command chmod. And then we're going to give it the permission 644 um, authorized keys. And this is the name of the file, of course. And just for your curiosity, if you're curious, uh, the 644 changes the permission so that the owner has read and write permissions. Uh, the group members have read permissions, and the public only has read permissions. Okay, so we made that change. We've got the authorized key file changed to uh, C4 or 644 rather. So now we need to make some changes to the SSH server. So again, we're going to use nano, and we also need. Uh, sudo privileges for this. So we're going to issue the command sudo nano and we're going to go to the directory etc ssh and then we're going to open the file called sshd underscore config and then we're going to enter our password for our administrator account, our root or sudo commands. Okay, so in this file, we need to make several, uh, just a few changes. We need to change a few options to know. We need to change password authentication, permit empty passwords, uh, challenge response authentication, and the option for using PAM. All of those to know. So in this file, I'm just going to use the control W command. And I'm going to search for password authentication. Okay, so this is uh, commented out. So I'm going to take the comment, hashtag, pound sign, whatever you want to call it out. And then I'm going to change this option to no. So then the next thing that we need to change is uh, right below that, permit empty passwords. Again, take the pound sign off and it's already set to no. So then challenge response of the authentication, it's already set to no. And then we need to find use PAM. And that's currently set to yes, but we're gonna change it to no. And we're done making the changes to that file. So we can do control X, Y and press enter. And at this time, we need to restart the SSH server. And we do that with sudo, as of course. So sudo service, and then we're going to specify the SSH service, and then we are going to say reload. Okay, so that has reloaded uh, the SSH service. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're actually going to close our 
uh, SSH session. I'm just going to type exit here. And I'm going to reopen PuTTY uh, because what we're going to have to do is actually reconfigure our SSH connection within PuTTY. So I'm going to click on the baseline connection. I'm going to click on load. And then I'm going to go over here to um, SSH under the category in the sidebar. And then I'm going to click on off. And then I want to specify the private key file uh, that's for authentication. And I put that on the desktop, double click on it. So then I'm going to go back to the session and I'm going to save the changes that I just made. And now I'm going to reconnect into the Pi. And um, the master again. And now I know the font changed. Let me change that real quick. So now at this time, it's actually prompting for the passphrase that we added to the private key. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Okay, so now we're logged on to the server. So one thing to note here is that this key phrase is only used to log you on to the server. If you should need to perform administrative tasks, uh, you will still be prompted for your regular password. So don't get rid of your password thinking that you don't need it anymore. Um, so now we also need to make a change in FileZilla. So I'm going to open the site manager again. I'm going to click on our connection. Actually, it's already selected. And I'm going to change our logon type from normal to key file. You'll still need to specify a user, uh, but then you'll specify the key file, which is out on our desktop currently. And then we'll go ahead and connect in and just abort that previous connection. And now again, it's prompting for the passphrase for that certificate, that private key. and it will connect you right back in to the server. Um, you'll want to set up a public and private key for every user that accesses the Pi remotely. Um, setting up a public and private key for root um, is not necessary in this case due to the fact that root by default is not permitted to connect into the system via SSH.